Hey, this is Matt once again. What about you in the video? The, the paid request this time from Mark. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, topics, reviews, commentaries, re reviews, reactions, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box under each of these videos. Now, Mark wanted me to take a look at the episode one of a show called Cracker. Now, this is one. It's a two-part episode, so ultimately it was about an hour and 40 minutes. And it's called Mad Woman in the Attic. Which, honestly, I must have missed it. I don't know what that title suggests with the episode. Because there's no Mad Woman, there is no Attic. I might, might have missed something, but I don't really know why it's titled that. Uh, if Mark can chime in, I probably missed something. If so, I apologize. But Crocker, I, I guess this, it was a show... That started off overseas in the UK. Stars Robbie Coltrane. Which I remember, funny enough, from this film called Kroll. From the 80's. K-R-U-L-L. -L. I remember him from that. And most people remember him from the Harry Potter films. He's been in other stuff as well. But again, more people don't remember Robbie Coltrane from Harry Potter. I remember more from Kroll. He has a uh, supporting role in that. He does a good job here. He's a guy named Fitz who's a gambler, an alcoholic. He's abrasive, but he's a pretty smart criminal psychologist. He's going through problems. His wife leaves him. Um, he's pretty much there with his teenage son who doesn't really do anything. And, you know, the, the dad, Robbie, gets mad about that. I was just calling by his character, Fitz. Fitz gets mad about that. And looks into these women that are being killed on the, the railroad, on these trains. And one thing leads to another, they find this guy who has amnesia, he's bloodied up, fight him by a, a railroad track, and he can't remember who he is, and there's like, well, is he the killer? Maybe he's the killer, and it's an investigation into who this person is, who has no memory, as up to Robbie Coltrane's fits to crack him, to get into his mind and see what he spills out. Now, I know there was an American version of this show, which I never saw, and it had uh, Robert Pastorelli playing the lead. For those who don't know, Robert Pastorelli, uh, that's a guy who... What would people remember him? He was on some episodes of Murphy Brown. I remember him from stuff like he was an eraser and with Arnold Schwarzenegger. If you ever saw the one, he's the one who becomes an ally for Arnold. He has to play bait and put that ultra seltzer in his mouth to make it seem like he's having a heart attack as a distraction for Arnold and Vanessa Williams to get into this area. That's Robert Pastorelli. He's been in a lot of other stuff too, but good character actor. Um, maybe one day I'd be interested in giving his show a look because I, I do like him. Nothing is Robbie Coltrane. I would say I like Robert Pastore Robert Pastorelli a little bit more as an actor than Robbie Coltrane, but I do think Robbie does a good job in this. That's probably the the main thing I take away from this because I wouldn't say I loved this. I think it just felt a bit too long. I mean. I'm not saying it should be 30 minutes long or something, but I felt that when it got into the middle, it was kind of spinning its wheels a bit too much. There are some lines of dialogue in mind earlier on, before his wife leaves him. They're at this restaurant, and Robbie Coltrane, Fitz has taught him to this lady, friend of his, his wife's, about, you know, you talk about fem feminism, but you pay a black woman three pounds to clean your house. I mean, it's a teeny bit hypocritical. I know he's saying this stuff because he's drawn, and, but I mean, he's got a point. <laughs> he does have a point, and that's why she throws the drink at him, because he's got a point. But when... He finds out what's going on and really tries to get into this case. Tries to talk to his amnesia guy. 
the thing is, like, the amnesia guy, like, because he can't remember anything, he's kind of just, I don't know, I don't think I did, maybe I did. Kind of that spinning the wheel over and over and over again. And maybe it's supposed to be us, all the audience, and going, well, did he do it? Did he not do it? But I don't know, maybe just the guy, the suspect, it's not he was a bad actor, but just what he was given, it just, I didn't feel a strong connection to him. I didn't really feel a strong pathos about him. Uh, it, it tries. It does try. I mean, there's a point later on where, oh, wait, someone, no one knows who I am? Wait, no one has come to identify me? Oh, this lady says I'm her husband. And then he goes there, and then people come out and go, actually, no, that wasn't true. She just wanted some publicity. And there's a look the guy has where he's just distraught. I, I didn't mind that moment. But, again, it was kind of, just fell a lot of spinning. Well, I just don't know if this dude would be an what becomes an hour and 40 minutes to have this story take place. I mean, you do see a bit of Robbie's investigative skills. Like he mentions, well, wait a minute. He ne he, when he wanted to know the time, he looked at the clock. And this is spoilers starting now. Spoilers. He looked at the clock. He didn't look at there's no marks that he had a watch. Think about it. If this guy kills people at the train, he's going to need a watch to know when the train comes in. You know, good investigative notations. What do you that? I, I like stuff like that. I kind of wish there was a bit more of it. Because other than that, it's kind of... Either try and talk to the guy, and the guy can't give an answer because he has amnesia. Or, at one point, witnesses a bit of an autopsy. I can't remember what. That thing with, you know, okay, you don't be in my custody because we can't hold him so long because he doesn't remember and we really have no proof. So it's kind of like following this guy, these two Robbie Coltrane, with this suspect, and there's a point where... He goes to where the suspect gets punched in the nose. He comes back bloody. Or a few conversations they have in Robbie Coltrane's home. Or, like I said, going to see what might be his wife and it's not his wife. Maybe I just didn't find that as interesting as other people did. I just didn't find that intriguing. I either would have liked a bit more of an investigative angle. Or to be total to with a actor... That I do think Robert Coltrane outshined the other guy. Like he outacted the other guy. Because Robbie's is when he gets into it, he gets so intense. And the other guy just either because he doesn't have much to play with in the script or just the the way it was directed out, I just I didn't really feel Okay, for example, go watch a film called The Exorcist 3, where George C. Scott is talking with Brad Dourif. And they're going verbal back and forth. That's really intense. That's very well done. You really feel that stuff going on. You really feel that. I didn't really feel it with this. And those sequences. Again, not saying the, the suspect that died was a bad actor. It just I didn't just feel much of anything. I don't know how else to word it. And I said the spoilers. There's a point where... A guy phones in saying, oh, he's the suspect, I, I saw him. They take the guy on the phone from his word. It's like, why don't you come in and tell us? I'm like, does that mean anybody could just phone in and say, yeah, I saw him do it, but you're not going to come in and talk to us face to face? I did, Does that mean anybody could just do that and be a fucking troll? I guess so. But Robbie Coltrane believes in him. Finds out that this guy was in the monastery. 
and then, <clears throat> then the suspect starts remembering and he goes, I know now that I didn't do it. So then, one thing leads to another. Robbie Coltrane investigates a few after he some piece of info. But as I said, these bits, it's not like you have a lead who's getting information but being physical and intimidating. And maybe it's over the top, but it's fun. Like I would see David Caruso do, do in CSI Miami. It might not be realistic, but it's fun and entertaining and escapism. Or yeah, that even wittier type of banter a la when Columbo tries to solve a case and he's just so disarming where it's fun just to see how everybody thinks he's such a dumbass when he's the smartest guy in the room and the other people don't know it and we the audience do know it and it's the fun of when these guys who think they got away with it or these ladies these bad guys think they got away with it just how because this disarming personality he just completely obliterates the the villain's plan to get away with it that's part of the fun of it here it's not even really a lot of cracking that Robbie Coltrane does it's pretty much talking to the guy and the guy doesn't know and then the guy kind of just remembers on his own and then there you go he remembers on his own and then the investigation is now a whole lot of other investigating find out who the guy is get to the train gets his female cop to help him now it's helped by the banter not banter but the I thought Robert Coltrane the female cop I like the way they work together. Like, they get in the elevator, and she's like, I'm going to stream. Uh, yeah. And then when he finally makes her agree, I wouldn't even say make her. Like, she, she's still portrayed as a strong character. Wow, a strong female character. I was told that didn't exist until only five years ago. But here's another example of a strong female character. Because she accepts on her terms... And then when they walk out, what's the trouble? Uh, just a test. She just says that. So I liked her. I wish she was in it more. But she really only comes into it. She pops in. But she really only comes much more into play until like the third act of this. If you watch it as... You can watch it as a movie. Two of them put together. And when they find the kill on the train, it's just, it's not like any action or excitement or thrills or suspense. It's pretty much, they get on the train, guy runs, Robbie grabs him, holds him, a train's coming, but it goes on the other track, and Robbie says a few words, and that's it. And then the suspect wants to go back to the monastery. He's like, if this is the real world, you guys can keep it. So, it was interesting to watch one time to see Robbie Coltrane's performance. He's definitely not a perfect character as in, like I say, a bit too much of a gambler, too much of an alcoholic. He, well, the stuff I mentioned before, abrasive. But, you tell at the end of the day with how he tries to help the suspect that he does mean well at the end of the day. He does have a decent sense of humor, but not. It wasn't as funny as like Columbo or other stuff. It was just. It was fine. I won't say I loved it. It was fine. It wasn't the biting snarkiness of House. Like House MD, I really enjoy. Which is a mystery, but it involves medical stuff as well. So. So I, I remember liking Columbo. I liked House MD. Just. Maybe having a guy who has no memory and then it's kind of hard to crack that. Maybe that wasn't the first episode. But it was. A lot of people love it. I mean, it's not bad. I'm not going to say it's bad. It just, if I watched this episode, I would not think of continuing watching the rest of it. Or I would go, hmm, I'm curious what Robert Pastorelli's American show was like. And go watch that first episode, which I haven't seen. But uh, let's say it was fine. 
just wasn't something I was in love with. But, uh, you know, it's not a rantery. Really. I didn't hate it, but it, it was okay. It was all right. But, uh, yeah. just some little things, my own point of view, I just had some issues with. But, if you like Robbie Coltrane, and you're big in those Harry Potter films, you want to see him in a different type of role, this is a show for you. Uh, this is on YouTube, by the way, for free. Someone uploaded it on YouTube for free. You can find it. I don't know if the Robert Pastorelli one is. But anyway, with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.